the revelations of heaven and hell to seven youths. These seven youths were taken by Jesus Christ and shown heaven and hell while they were together as a group. Due to the recording, only six testimonies were recorded. This was originally transcribed from Spanish audio and is now being narrated. The Visit to Hell The First Testimony Luke 16:19. There was a rich man that dressed in purple and fine linen, who enjoyed luxurious living every day. In front of his gates a beggar named Lazarus was placed, covered with sores and hungering to be fed crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The beggar died and was carried by the angel to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And while suffering torments in Hades, he looked up and from a distance saw Abraham with Lazarus in his bosom. So he called out, Father Abraham, take pity on me and send Lazarus to dip his fingertip in water and cool my tongue, for I am in torment in this fire. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you enjoyed the good things in your lifetime, while Lazarus had the bad things. Now he is being comforted but you are suffering anguish. Besides that, there is a great chasm fixed between you and us, so that those who want to cross from here to you are unable. Neither can they cross from your side to us. The Bible, the Word of God, is very clear about the subject of heaven and hell. In this portion that we have just read, the Lord tells us about two places, heaven and hell, the condemnation or the salvation. There is no intermediate place. Purgatory does not exist. Limbo does not exist, where men exist for a while after they have departed from the earth and then go to heaven. The Bible is very clear about that. In April 11, 1995, God gave us a revelation that would change the trajectory of our lives. We had just begun to know about God and His Word. We are seven youths, to whom God has given the privilege and great responsibility of sharing this revelation with the world. Everything started about approximately 10 a.m. We were praying and were prepared to go out on a picnic later that day. Suddenly, around 10 a.m., a very powerful white light shone through one of the windows. When the light appeared, all of us immediately started to speak in tongues and were baptized with the Holy Ghost. In that moment, all of us were astonished and fascinated by what we saw. That glorious light was illuminating the entire room. The light was much stronger than any light from the sun. In the middle of the light, we saw a host of angels dressed in white. And these angels were so beautiful, tall, and very good looking. In the middle of all those angels, we saw something amazing. The figure of a man. This image was a special being a man who was dressed in very white mantle and a robe. His hair was like golden threads, and we could not see his face because he was too brilliant. However, we saw a golden belt around his chest with gold lettering that said, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He was wearing pure gold sandals on his feet, and his beauty was without equal. When we saw the presence of that man, all of us fell to our knees. Then we started to hear his voice. It was a very special and wonderful voice. Every word drilled into our hearts like a double-edged sword. Just like it is written in the Word of God, Hebrews 4.12. He spoke to us in very simple but powerful words. We audibly heard him say to us, My little children, do not be afraid. I am Jesus of Nazareth, and I have visited you to show you a mystery, so you can show and tell the towns nations, cities, churches, and all places. Where I tell you to go, you will go. And where I tell you not to go, you will not go. The Holy Bible, the Word of God, says in Joel 2.28, It shall come to pass that after that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. These are the times that God is preparing for everyone. Then something strange happened 
a, a, a rock. It, it just appeared in the middle of the room. And the Lord, who was with us, made us get on that rock. The rock was about eight inches above the floor, and a huge hole appeared in the floor. It was a huge, black, terrifying hollow or, or cavern. Soon, we fell on top of the rock and went down through the hollow in the floor. It was dark, and it led us to the center of the earth. While we were in that gloomy darkness, we were so scared. We were so afraid that we said to the Lord, Lord, we don't want to go to that place. Don't, don't take us to that place, Lord. Take us out of here, Lord. The Lord answered us with a very beautiful and compassionate voice. This experience is necessary so you can see and tell others. We were in the middle of a horn-shaped tunnel and we started to see shadows, uh, demons, and, and figures that moved from one place to another. We kept going deeper and deeper down. In just a matter of seconds, we felt an emptiness and a great fear. We then arrived at some caverns, at some horrible doors, uh, like it was like a labyrinth. Now, we didn't want to go inside, and we noticed a terrible smell and a heat that choked us. Once we entered, we saw terrible things, frightful images. The entire place was engulfed in flames, and in the middle of these flames there were bodies of thousands of people, and they were suffering in great torment. The sight was so horrifying, we didn't want to see what was shown to us. The place was divided into different sections of torment and suffering. One of the first sections that the Lord allowed us to see was the Valley of Cauldrons, as we called it. There were millions of cauldrons. The cauldrons were, uh, well, they were inlaid at the level of the ground. And each of them was burning with lava inside. And in, inside each one was a soul of a person who had died and gone to hell. As soon as those souls saw the Lord, they shouted and started to scream, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, give us a chance to get out of this place. Lord, take me out of here. I'll tell the world that this place is real. But the Lord didn't even look at them. There were millions of men, women, and young people in that place. We also saw homosexuals and, and drunkards in torment. We saw all these people shouting in such great torment. It shocked us to see how their bodies were being destroyed. Worms were coming in and out of their empty eye sockets, mouths and ears, and were penetrating the skin throughout all their body. This fulfills the word of God written in the book of Isaiah 66, 24. They shall go forth. They shall gaze upon the dead bodies of those who have rebelled against me. For their worm shall not die, nor shall their fire be quenched. They shall be an abhorrent to all mankind. Also in Mark 9, 44, it says, Where their worm does not die, and the fire is not put out. We were just horrified at what we were watching. We saw flames about 9 to 12 feet high. And within each flame, there was a soul of a person that had died and went to hell. The Lord allowed us to see a man who was inside one of those cauldrons. He was, he was upside down, and the flesh on his face was falling in pieces. He remained watching the Lord intently, and then shouted and started to call on the name of Jesus. He said, Lord, have mercy. Lord, give me a chance. Lord, take me out of this place. But the Lord Jesus didn't even want to look at him. Jesus simply turned his back on him. When Jesus did this, the man started to curse and blaspheme the Lord. <gasps> this man was John Lennon, the member of the satanic music group, the Beatles. John Lennon was a man who mocked and made fun of the Lord during his life. He said that Christianity was going to disappear and Jesus Christ would be forgotten by everyone. However, today this man is in hell, and Jesus Christ is alive. Christianity hasn't disappeared either. As we started to walk on the edges of that place, the souls extended their hands to us and begged for mercy. They asked Jesus to take them out of there, but the Lord would not even look at them. 
Then we started to go through different sections. We came to the most terrible section of hell, where the worst torments happen, the center of hell, the most concentrated form of torment, such torments that a human being could never express them. The only people here were those who knew Jesus and the Word of God. There were pastors, evangelists, missionaries, and all types of people that had once accepted Jesus and knew the truth, but lived a double life. There were also backsliders. Their suffering was a thousand times worse than anyone else. They were shouting and begging the Lord for mercy. But the word of the Lord says in the book of Hebrews 10, 26 through 27, For if we continue on sinning willfully after acquiring the knowledge of the truth, then there is no longer left any sacrifice for our sins, but some dreadful anticipation of judgment and of a fierce fire that is to devour those who oppose God. Those souls were there because they preached, they fasted, they sung and lifted their hands in the church. But in the streets and the homes, they were in adultery, fornication, lying, a robbery. We cannot lie to God. The Bible says that he whom much has been given, much will be required. Luke twelve forty eight. God then allowed us to see two women that had once been Christian sisters while on the earth. But they didn't live a righteous life before the Lord. One said to the other, You cursed wretch! It's your fault that I'm in this place. You didn't preach to me a holy gospel. And because you didn't tell me about the truth, I'm now here in hell. They would say these things to each other in the midst of the flames. And they hated each other because there is no love, mercy, or forgiveness in hell. There were thousands of souls who had known the word of God but their lives weren't clean before the holy presence of the Lord. You cannot play with God or with the flames of hell either, the Lord said. He also told us, My sons, all of the suffering on the earth concentrated in just one place is nothing, nothing compared with the suffering that a person has in the best parts of hell. If it is this terrible for those who suffer least in hell, how much worse must it be for those in the center of hell who once knew the word of the Lord and walked away from it? Then the Lord told us that we could play with fire on earth, but never with the fire in hell. We continued walking through different places, and the Lord showed us many different people. We could see that all the people had approximately six different types of torments, there were souls tormented by demons with all types of punishments. Another terrible punishment was their own conscience, saying, Remember when they preached to you? Remember when you heard the word of God? Remember when they told you about hell and you laughed at it? Their own conscience tormented them, just like the worms that crossed all over their bodies, like the consuming fire that was a thousands, thousands times more hotter than we know. This was the reward that the devil has for all those who seek him and follow him. The word of the Lord says in Revelations 21.8, As for the cowardly, however, and the unbelieving, and the fearful, the murderers, the immoral, those practicing magic arts, and idolaters, and all liars, their lot is in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. This is the second death. Next, the Lord showed us a man that had murdered six people. And these six peoples now surrounded him. And they were shouting at him, saying, It's your fault. We're in this place. Your fault. The murderer tried to cover his ears because he didn't want to listen to them. But he could not avoid listening, since in hell, all your senses are much more sensitive. Souls in that place were tormented with an intolerable thirst for water that cannot be satisfied in any way. Like the Bible story of Lazarus and the rich man. The rich man in hell wanted one single drop of water. That would have been enough. The word of the Lord says in Isaiah 